hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. In this short video, I'm going to talk about the difference between the Th1 and the Th2 immune response. But before I do that, welcome to my channel. If you haven't, if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below or right next to it is a bell notification because when I upload videos like this, you'll be first to be notified. If you watch on Facebook, thank you very much. I always appreciate a growing audience. Please hit the like button down below. And again, if you find this information valuable, please share with a friend because I always appreciate a growing audience. It helps the YouTube logarithms, Google, everything. The internet is huge. So the more fans I get, the better off this content's gonna be. And I always appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so I wanna talk about the immune system and I wanna talk about in particularly the first line of defense and the second line of defense. And that is the Th1 and the Th2 system. Now we have a gland called the thymus gland and it's, it's right in the sternum and it's responsible for our immune cells. And we produce a lot of them in, in our youth and as we get to about the age about 18, 19, 20, it kind of, it's useless. It's just there but it doesn't do anything anymore. So what the thymus gland does, it produces what cells, the Th0, and the Th0 differentiates into a bunch of other Th cells, but in particular I want to talk about Th1, Th2, Th17, and the T regulatory cells. Now the difference between the Th1 and the Th2 cells is when it comes to the immune response. So we have this first line of defense, and that's the Th1, that's the cytotoxic cells, and that's an immediate response. It's cellular immunity. And this is, I always say, this is like the special forces. This is the first line of defense. This, is, this guards you against bacteria, against viruses, against parasites. And what it does, it attacks. It attacks a cell. And then we have the delayed response, which is the Th2 response, the humoral immunity. This is delayed. This is the antibodies. This is the second wave. Okay, this is where the antibodies are produced, like IgG, IgM, IgA, and IgE. So this is like, okay, so around, this is like the second string. So we need the first string of the Th1, and then we need the backup, which are the antibodies, the Th2, if that makes sense, if, that, if that's clear. So when it comes down to certain cells and what they do, so the Th1, this produces the cells the interferon the tissue necrosis factor alpha. These cells guard against intracellular bacteria, viruses, parasites. The Th2, this is the cytokines, the interleukins 4, 6, 5, 10, 13. This is the delayed. Now what happens is when your immune system takes a big hit and it can't really keep up, then you get with this condition called the cytokine storm. And this is when you really, really feel sick because the immune response is just not either working correctly or it's oversensitive. And this is the extracellular, uh, extracellular activity. Then we have these TH17 and we have the T regulatory. So how the immune system works, it's kind of like a balance system. So you have the TH1, which is the first responders, then you have the TH2, which is the delayed response. And you have this regulate, it's like a modulator. And this is what the T17 and the T regulatory cells do. They, hit, they help modulate turning on, turning off. It helps balance out the balance beam because the body always wants to maintain homeostasis. And the TH17, those cells are heavily influenced by glutathione. Glutathione is amino acid produced in the, in the uh, liver and what happens if we don't take care of our liver, the glutathione production decreases, and this is where we get our bodies are open for uh, any type of like sickness, illness, and disease. Also, the T regulatory, this helps balance out as well, and that is very heavily influenced by vitamin D. This is why people who get sick often have low vitamin D levels, and this is why a lot, if you see my previous videos, I'm always talking about increasing your vitamin D3 levels. When you increase your vitamin D3 levels, then it's going to help balance out the immune response and you're going to get better overall. A lot of people who are sick, especially nowadays, they have low vitamin D levels. So always get one, do your vitamin D levels checked and take an additional supplemental vitamin D3. I live outside of Chicagoland, so I always recommend 10,000 I use per day to help balance out the immune response. So how this works is that when we get a pathogen, 
an antigen, a foreign protein, bacteria, parasite, virus, it comes in and you have the first responders. The first responders are the Th1 cells and the CD4 and helper cells and the killer T cells and CD8 cells. So these are the guys that attack it first. And they make a copy of it and they tell the immune system, hey, this is, this is the foreign invader, so if you recognize this again, this is who you should attack. And then this is where the Th2 cells come in. This is your antibodies, the B cells, the humoral immunity, the laid. The B cells and the macrophages. The macrophages are the big eaters. And then the antibodies are made. So this is, in general, how the immune system works, and it's a constant balance. Why is this important? Because sometimes we are either in Th1 dominance or Th2 dominance. So when you have the balance beam and it's tipped in either direction, whatever dominant it is, that means it's overactive and it's, the other side is weaker, if that makes sense. So in people who are more Th1 dominant, meaning that that's the weaker side, is they're always getting sick. They're always getting sick. They're always getting sick. They're always getting sick. Or the Th2 dominant, these are the ones who are just chronically sick. I can't get rid of this. I can't get rid of that. And again, it could be an allergy. It could be a cut in the finger. So the people who are always getting sick are Th1 dominant. The people who are just cannot get well are Th2 dominant. So what constitutes what's the dominant end? Certain conditions. Typically, autoimmune diseases are Th1 dominant. It's overactive. Autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's, you have multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, then you get fatigue, you have low T3 levels, estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance plays a big part in how the immune system works. Or your TH2 dominant, you tip the scale the opposite way. There are certain autoimmune diseases that are TH2 dominant, and these are the systemic diseases, like overall body, typically Graves. Graves disease is typically TH2 dominant. This is where people have chronic allergies, histamine intolerances due to the cytokine storm, hyperactive immune systems, they're always getting sick, chemical sensitivities. Chemical sensitivities mean they're very sensitive to smells. That means, again, TH2 is dominant. It's overactive. So this is so then if you de could determine which side you're dominant, this is why sometimes people take certain supplements and it doesn't work. So if you're Th1 dominant, again, this is one. This is this is the supplements that you actually want to use: astragalus, astralg uh, echinacea, and licorice juice. That will help calm down the Th1 dominance. If you're Th2 dominant, pine bark, grapeseed extract, green tea, resveratrol, caffeine. If you're Th2 dominant, this is the people who are actually taking caffeine and it doesn't work for them because they're Th2 dominant. So overall, in addition to to help the immune system, of course, glutathione is always going to help balance out the regulatory system, diet's a big part, and exercise. So I hope this helps. Again, Th1 and Th2 immune response, we want to balance it out. Remember the Th17 and Th regulatory, that's the modulator. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please share with a friend. And if you think I could help you out, please click the link down below. Go to my website. I'll be more than happy to talk to you for 15 minutes. Have a good day. Thank you.